and uh, right here. Okay, so we're gonna look at um, ooh, something's not right. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, uh, Lauren, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see my OneNote? Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so this is not math, uh, chemistry. And uh, okay, so new section. So our last, our new section, last section um, is called um, Unit 7 uh, Conics. Okay, sounds ominous. And uh, this first unit is just going to be on linear um, equations. And mostly it's just review. But we'll talk about what conics are too here. So, um, okay, so let's get the next one out of the way. Uh, okay, so put that down. And once again, if, if my if my volume seems to give out on us here, uh, just unmic yourself and just say something, and that usually clears up my mic for some reason. So I'm not sure what's going on. I don't want to have to buy a new computer, um, but uh, maybe I have to. Um, okay, so let's uh, look at this. Okay, so uh, so first of all, what is conics? I guess that's that's where we should probably start. So what is conics? And uh, conics really are shapes. Uh, created by cutting cones. Sounds exciting. Um, okay, so if you think of a cone, um, I have a cone here, and you were just looking at a, a cone from different perspectives. Um, obviously, the way I've drawn it right here kind of looks like a triangle with a um, kind of a round piece at the bottom. But if you were to take the cone and, and uh, um, look at the bottom of the cone, like so you tilted it, you would you would just get this shape. And then the, the, the cone tip would be somewhere in the distance there. And that that would obviously be a circle. Um, so one of one of the shapes we look at with with uh, conics are circles. And um, that's a, a pattern we'll look at in this this chapter. Um, another thing we could do with a cone is if you if you cut uh, the cone, um, let's say you cut it right down the side here. So my, my daughter was drawing with my tablet here, so she's chosen lots of nice colors for us today. Um, so if I, if I cut the, that part of the cone off and I, and I got rid of that part, and you were to tilt the cone and, and look, at, look at it from this side, um, what, what shape do you think you would, you would see? So it's kind of hard to envision that. I usually, I usually get you guys to do this in class. I actually bring paper in and we cut it and stuff like that, which makes it a bit more hands-on. Um, but you'll have to kind of believe me on this. But if this is the cone, and you cut away a side of it, what you actually get is a shape that looks like that. And so this, this part of it, the part that's sort of remaining, uh, is, is parabolic. So we actually get parabolas uh, forming here. Um, and then um, another cone, or another other shape you can do if you get a cone, is if you cut it um, like that, so kind of at a slant. So if you, if you, were, to, if you were to cut it like that, you, you would get a, a circle looking at the bottom. But if you cut it at a slant and you look at the shape you get from the bottom, like looking this way now, uh, you actually get what's called whoops. So they're, they're kind of, you can think of them like circles that have been pushed or stretched or squeezed or something like that. So if you grabbed a circle and squeezed it, it, it would produce an ellipse. Um, and uh, the last shape we get, we actually have to create a different kind of cone um, called a uh, double napped <clears throat> cone. And a double napped cone is one in which you have kind of a cone sitting on top of another cone. You know, that's just a common thing you see every day. Um, but uh, something like that. And if you cut the cone kind of like the parabola one, kind of like this one here, but you, you cut it so that you go through both cones. And then you look at it from this perspective. So you're kind of, your eyeballs are over here looking at this shape and you've removed that part and that part. Uh, then what you would see is a parabola that kind of opens up and then a parabola that opens downwards. 
and this is the, the fourth shape we, we look at here, um, called a hyperbola. So really the whole chapter revolves around these four shapes, circles, parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas. And in, in today's lesson, we're gonna really focus on lines, but we're gonna talk a little bit about circles too, because you guys have, have done a bit of that. So the first thing I want to do was look at um, what's called the distance formula. So that, that's a formula we, we need to work with um, in this chapter. And so the distance formula, um, basically allows you to find the length between any any two points. Um, so uh, you're trying to predict how long a line is. And so for example, in a circle, um, if you were trying to find the diameter, if you knew the end points of the diameter, like if you, if you do a circle, and you knew there was an end point here and an end point here, you, you said that's the diameter. Well, I, I could measure the length of that line if, if I knew the distance formula. So the distance formula is really, it's just Pythagoras. And we did a lot of that in the last chapter, but just to show you um, a picture here, I draw a really rough sketch here. And so let's, let's say you had a point here, call it P1, and a point here, call that P2. And you wanna know the length of that line. So you're trying to find how long that line is. So let's call it L. Um, then what you, you could look at is um, this distance which would be um, your X values and this value here, which would be your Y values. So you'd have like your, your run and your rise. Now we're not gonna work out slope, but, but you, could, you could do that. And of course, if you could get those two numbers for run and rise, you could use Pythagoras to, to work that out. So you could take the run and square it, add it to the rise and square it. And that would give you L, L squared. So L, L would actually equal, um, L would equal the square root of the run squared and the rise squared. Now, for many of you guys that have done physics, that's not really how we write the formula. Um, so let me just draw a bigger picture here and, and see if you guys would probably recognize this, this formula. Um, oopsie. So let's just draw a bigger graph here. Um, and let's say you, you actually have a point, um, oopsie. Why is that not working? Okay, there we go. A point there and a point here. And let's say this is um, a one, and this is, uh, let's say four, that's one. And let's say this is five here. <clears throat> Someone says, well, how, how long is that line? How, what's the length of, what's the length of that line? Okay, well, we, we can do some simple Pythagoras here. I will show you a formula here in a second. Um, but you could just say, well, look, this, this line along the bottom is three units long. And this line here is, is four units long. Uh, five minus one is four, four minus one is three. And now if I square those numbers, I should be able to get L. So L should equal the square root of three squared plus four squared. So L would equal the square root of nine plus 16. So L would equal the square root of 25, which would equal five then. And so you could use uh, sort of a Pythagorean way of doing that. Now the actual formula they use um, in math is they look at the change in X and the change in Y. So the actual formula for L is the square root of delta X, which is um, X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. So that's, that's a formula you should have handy uh, when you're doing your your tests and stuff and, or, and quizzes and things, okay. So that's that's sort of the one we work with here. So let's give you an example, and, and I'm going to do this this next question, not graphing it. So just just given that information. So let's say um, how long is the line between two comma th negative three and negative four comma eight. So how long is that line? Okay. And you, you, could, you could draw it on a graph and try to work out the, 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 the delta X and delta Y. But I, I think for a question like this, the formula is just, just so much faster. So I'm gonna go square root of X2 minus X1 and then Y2 minus Y1. Um, the only thing you gotta be careful about, and you, you probably learned this in grade 10 and 11 when you use this formula um, for the first time, is you kind of have to be careful which point um, like when you make a point, point one and point two, you guys stick with that. 
So for example, if I, if I make this x1, this has to be y1. And this has to now be x2, and this has to be y2. So once, once you denote one of the points to be point 0.1, both the x and y values have to be from that point. So, um, so now I can say, well, x2 is negative 4 minus x1, which is 2. So I'm creating lots of negatives for myself here. Um, and then y2, um, which would be uh, 8, minus y1, which would be negative 3. So my L value here would be the square root of uh, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6, but squared would be 36. And then um, looks like I'm going to get a square root number, or rational number here. Um, so I'm going to get uh, 8, uh, and I'm, I'm minusing negative 3, so I'm really adding 3, which is 11. But then I'm, see, I'm squaring it, should be squared there. Uh, and so 11 um, squared, um, of course, is 121. So I'm going to add 1, 2, 1. So the length of the line between these two points uh, would be 121 plus 36. And so that's 157. And that, that number is, um, I, I'm assuming it's irrational. So we're going we're gonna to square root 157. Yeah, so we're, we're getting like 12 point, or I'm getting 12.53 ish sort of thing. So, um, so that, that is irrational. So really, we would just leave it in that form. So on the multiple choice portion of the test, um, I would I would have just written root 157 and, and left it like that. Now if it was something like root 16, then then I obviously would reduce that down to four or something like that, right? So something like that is smaller to work with. Okay, so that's the distance formula. I don't want to spend too much time on that because I'm assuming you guys have seen that before. Um, the next formula, which is quite useful, especially for circles, um, is um, the uh, midpoint formula. And so this, this basically says, uh, where is the middle of this line? Now, of course, we, we can approximate it. Like we could say, well, there's, there's the middle. Uh, but more what we're looking for is the coordinates. Like where, where would the middle of that line be as a, as a set of uh, coordinates? And um, if I go back to the question above, the one where we actually had graphed it, um, and uh, we look at uh, this one, I'll use red here. So the, the, mid, the mid, midpoint of the line here would be about there, so some, somewhere there. And um, you know, could we could we determine the coordinates of that point just looking at the graph, like just sort of seeing where the, the graph is here? Well, it looks to me like this would have to be in the middle of one to five, somewhere in the middle there. And so we know this distance here is four. So divide that by two would be two, which means this must be three here. So that must be three. So how, how did I get that three? Well, I, I took one and I added five, or I took five and added one. And then I divided it by two. And I, cut, I found half of it. Um, and of course, on the um, on the x-axis, on the uh, on the x-axis, I'm not sure why I just got rid of that. Sorry. Um, on the x-axis, um, I started at one and went to four. So that's that's a distance of three. So divide that by two is one point five, which would make this um, two point five here. So the coordinates at this point probably should be 2.5 comma 3. And that, that would have been taking 1, adding 4, uh, so give me 5, and then dividing by 2 to give me 2.5. So the formula we use for this is a fairly easy one to remember. Uh, you want to add the two uh, x values together. So you want to take x1 and add it to x2 and divide it by 2. And then you take y1, add it to y2, and you divide by by two. Okay, so let's just give you a quick question here and see if, how you guys fare on this one. So let's say uh, find the midpoint for a line with endpoints at um, let's say negative four comma uh, ten. And uh, let's say six comma negative two. So why don't you guys try to use that formula and see if you could find out where the midpoint is. Just give me a, maybe 30 seconds or 40 seconds to work on that.
Okay, so um, if we denote, uh, I'm just gonna switch it here. I'm gonna make this x2, and make this y2, and make this x1, and make this y1. And once again, it wouldn't have mattered if you made the first point, point one, and point two, the second one, um, but uh, just to show you why, or show you that effect. So x1 uh, is uh, six, and I'm gonna add negative four. I'm gonna divide by two. Um, and then I got to take my my y1 position, which is negative two, uh, add ten, and divide by by two here. So six uh, minus four is two. Divide by two is one. And negative two uh, plus ten would be eight. Divide by two is four. And even if I'd done it the other way, um, uh, negative four plus uh, six would have been two. Divide by two is one and uh, 10 minus 2 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. So it, does, it doesn't really matter how you uh, determ determine which point is point 0.1 and point 0.2. Okay, so we're blasting through this pretty quick. Uh, other equation here um, is the equation um, of a line. Okay. So I better just uh, keep track of what equations we've covered. So we covered uh, the, the equation for a line. And here is the equation uh, for the midpoint of, of a line. Um, and so what we're doing now is looking at the equation of a line specifically. Um, so a line itself, um, because it's, uh, um, that's gonna sound stupid. I'm gonna say a, a line is a, a line um, is, a, is a line, um, but obviously. Um, but uh, the, the, the line, sorry, a line, let's just draw a line first of all. Um, so maybe something like that. Should use a, a ruler for lines. Um, so that obviously has a slope to it. It has a y and an x-intercept, um, and it's linear. It doesn't doesn't change uh, slope. So the slope is the same. So lines are actually derived from their slopes. So um, we know that the slope of a line is the letter m. So let's see that slope. You, you might remember like y equals mx plus b. So the slope intercept form of a line. Uh, but the definition of slope um, is the change in, in so it's a rise over the run, but the change in uh, the y over the x. So it's actually y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And that's that's how you determine the slope of, of any line. So the change vertically um, uh, divided by the change horizontally. So let's, let's say that you're told some information about um, a, a, a line and you want to find out the, the equation of it. So there's no, another way we could rearrange this formula. Just sort of draw down here. And that is to sort of, if you were to cross multiply here to get rid of the fraction part, um, you could write this as um, m multiplied by x2 minus x1 equals y2 minus y1. And that's uh, like both those are sort of two standard ways of writing um, the equation of the line uh, where you have the slope and, and a point on the line itself. So let's, let's say you had a question where uh, someone said um, um, a line has a slope of two and passes through the point through the point negative one comma four. So you're told that this, this line has a slope of two and passes through this, this point here. And the question is, what is the equation of the line? Now there's, there's actually many, many ways to get the equation for the line. So I don't want to make it sound like you know, this is the way to do it. Um, so you, you can actually go back to grade uh, like 10, 11 math where you, you use that formula. Um, you can also um, use this new formula and I've actually seen an, a third way of which students uh, determine this. So there's no like right way to do this, but I, I wanted to use the formula in the red box um, to show you uh, one and maybe another way of doing it you might find um, useful. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite that formula um, just, just so I can work with that really easy to see. So x2 minus x1 equals y2 
minus y1. And once again, that's just derived from the slope, um, slope, so the definition of slope for a line. So what I know is the slope is two. So I know, I know m is two. Um, and I know that I have an x value of negative one and a y value of four somewhere on this line. Like the, the, the line could have obviously have many points, but that's, that's one of them. And so all I do is I, I take my equation I, and I put, I put a two for m because that's what m is, two is m. And then I just make x2 x. So I just say that's x. And then I go minus x1, which is one of the points on the line. So that's going to be my x1. So x minus negative 1 is x plus 1. And then that equals, let's, let's make y2 just y, just a random variable. Um, and then uh, we're going to say minus, minus y1, which would be 4. And um, that that would be uh, what we call the standard way of writing it. So this is called the standard form. And you know you can you can definitely leave it that way. That's totally fine. It's an acceptable way to leave it. Um, but <clears throat> for many of you, you're probably used to leaving it in the the conventional y equals mx plus plus b format. Um, and so you could have done that too. You could you could distribute the two. So two x plus two equals y minus four. So that would be y is equal to two x, and I'm going to add four to both sides. Um, so plus six. And you could leave it that way too. So really, you you have a choice here. Um, this this way is called the slope intercept method. And I, and I think for, for graphing purposes, I think if you're trying to graph a line, I think this second way makes a lot more sense for students because like, well, I know I start at six and my slope is two. Um, but for conics purposes, um, this actually is quite useful. And so if you're going into other areas of math and calculus and stuff, you actually will start to see it written more the way I have it in red here. But once again, you can write it either of those ways. That's totally, totally fine. Um, but uh, it's, it's kind of your, your choice on that. But the, the back of the book might, I haven't checked all the answers, it might leave it in that format. So as long as you're okay understanding that, you know, how you can convert back and forth, um, you'll, you'll know if you're uh, uh, correct or not. Okay, so I wanna just do one more question and then we're, we're done. Okay, so that's gonna be a pretty quick, quick day here. Um, and I'm gonna relate this to uh, circles here. Okay, so I'm gonna look at a circle here. And I will do a separate video about circles so we're not rushed too much here. But uh, I just want to show you how we use some of this information um, to, uh, to answer the question. So the, the, uh, the formula for a circle, uh, and once again, I'll, I'll derive this for you on the other video I'm going to make, um, is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And r is the radius of the circle. And the center of the circle is h comma k. Now, once again, that, that's, that's a bit heavy because we haven't derived it for you yet. But just kind of go with me on this one, that that's the radius and that the h and k are the, the center of the circle. Um, and then let's give you an example question here for this. Let's, and, and show you how it re relates to what we just, we just covered here. So example, um, a circle. as a um, diameter with endpoints at, uh, let me just choose my numbers here, here. Work. Sorry, let me just. Uh, um, sorry. At uh, one one and four five. And the question is find find the equation of the circle. So, so once again, we will give a video to show why this is the formula. Okay, so we haven't really explained why that's the formula. But what I'm trying to do in this video is show you how we use what we just did 
uh, to answer a question from a, a different section, basically. Um, so if you if you look at a graph of this, just um, for those uh, those like myself that are visual learners, like to kind of see what this would look like, um, um, and uh, those you're more algebraic might uh, might not draw a picture here, but one one would be here, and then uh, two three four uh, two three four five would be there, about. And so what we're saying is that these two points, they're on. I'm really horrible at drawing circles for hand, but they're they're on a circle. Oh my goodness. Woo. Yep. Yeah. Go back to art class. Um, so uh, so this uh, this is supposed to be a circle, but uh, um, erase some stuff here. So it's on a circle. With, uh, it's so not a circle. Um, but it's on a circle where those are the the uh, endpoints of the diameter of the circle. So basically, the line that goes across the middle, that's that's the diameter of the, the circle. Um, so that we need to find the center. We need to find the center there, and um, we need to know what the the radius is. So we need to know r. So we need to know what r is. So we need to know the radius, and we need to know uh, the center of the circle. So let's let's find the length of um, of the diameter first. Let's find the diameter. And obviously, to do that, we'd have to use one of those formulas we talked about. If I go up here again, uh, so that formula is the equation of a, of, a, of a line. That would not be the right one. That's the midpoint. That's not the right one. That's the length of a line. So we're going to have to use the distance formula to find out uh, the diameter. And then we could half that to find out uh, the radius. So the diameter here uh, would be, uh, let's, let's call it uh, d. How about that? So let's say d would equal the square root of x2. Um, minus x1 uh, squared, and then y2 minus y1 squared, and then sum those numbers together. So 1 minus 4 squared plus 1 minus 5 squared. So d would equal the square root of 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. Okay, now the radius, uh, uh, radius or up here, uh, diameter equals two times the radius. So the radius would equal the diameter over two. So the radius here would be five over two. And I'm gonna leave it as a fraction. I don't, I don't like working in decimal, especially when I'm gonna have to square something here. It's much easier to square the fraction than a decimal number. Uh, so let's leave it as a fraction. And so now I know the radius, I've got that. And so now I need to find my center. Well, to find the center, you'd have to use the midpoint formula. That's how you find the middle of a line. So to find the midpoint, I'll just draw a line like that. Um, I'm gonna take um, x2, which is, or x1, which is uh, four, and I'm gonna add that to x1, which is one. And I'm gonna go, or x2, sorry, divide that by two. And then I do the same thing for the y. I do five plus one, divide by two. So I know, that that's four plus one is five, and that's five over two. And six over two is three. So this is the center, and this is the radius. My goodness. Um, so we're gonna write a formula here for this. So remember the formula for a circle above, which I will define for you, is x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared equals r squared. So my r value, don't forget, was five over two. So if I square five over two, I get 25 over four. So this would be 25 over four. And then I go x minus h, which is five over two squared, plus, <coughs> excuse me, uh, y minus three all squared. Now you might have questions like, why is it plus and why is it minus? Like why, like why am I using plus signs or minus signs here? Um, and that'll make more sense in the other video. So this question was really just to show you how you're gonna be using these formulas in other sections of the, of the chapter. Okay, so just to, just to paraphrase what we've done, we've, we've found the distance of a line. We found the um, uh, midpoint of a line. And we've found uh, maybe a different way of writing the equation of a line. 
the, the standard form equation. And once again, if you're more comfortable writing it in the form y equals mx plus b, that, that's totally fine. You, you don't have to use this new formula, but you'll, you might see it written in the book. So it's important, I guess, that you recognize it, that that's just a different way of writing um, the equation for a line. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the video there. That's a pretty sh relatively short video, I guess. Um, so let me stop that. Uh, stop recording here.